Next on Sisterhood of the Second Act. Low bone density or osteoporosis affects 54 million people. Lori Beth Moyer is a certified physician's assistant and the Fractured Liaison Service Orthopedic and Neurosciences Team Lead at Lewis Gale Physicians. She joins us today to tell us how we can fight this devastating condition. Sandra Brown Kelly was one of the first women reporters at the World News and Roanoke Times. Her long career has taken her all over the country with a second act teaching at college. We'll meet both these women on this edition of Sisterhood of the Second Act. Sisterhood of the Second Act is brought to you by Step out the door with confidence, ready to conquer the day. Whether you are going to the cafe down the street or headed into work, you know you will always look your best in cabby styles. Your stylist, Darlene Marshall, will help you pick the styles that make you sparkle. And Cabby has styles for all body types. Call Darlene at 540-330-6819, 540-330-6819, and follow her on Instagram at Dapper Darlin. I'm gonna be an oak tree. I think I'll be a dogwood tree. My kids said they'd be looking for a thorny tree for me. With Evergreen, you can be a tree. Our biodegradable urn combines your ashes, natural soil additives, and a native tree of your choice. Be a tree and grow for tomorrow. I want to be a tree. Learn more at evergreenmemorialtrust.com. Buy local this holiday season and get unique gifts on time. Start your holiday shopping at the New Moon Network store for original artwork by the Virginia artists featured on the Sisterhood of the Second Act set. You will also find Sisterhood merchandise there. Stop by the Earthworks Artworks Gallery at 228 South Pollard Street in Vinton, Virginia or shop online at newmoonnetwork.com and have it delivered to you. Your purchase supports Virginia artists and local programming by the New Moon Network. There's more inside the hemp mill than CBD products. There's a community. Stop in for Friday's Coffee Talk to enjoy free hemp coffee and treats. Patent pending products made from hemp for anxiety, pain relief, and organic healthy eating. Cabinoid products you can trust because the hemp is locally grown, processed, and formulated by us with patent pending formulations. That includes our pet calm and dog biscuits. The hemp mill, women owned and operated with nutritional offerings, local cards, gifts, jewelry, and trending fashions made by women-owned businesses, thehempmill.net. Now from the Fox Radio Roanoke studio, here's Kathy Heberly. Welcome to Sisterhood of the Second Act. I'm Kathy Heberly. One in two women and up to one in four men over the age of 50 will break a bone due to osteoporosis. And according to the Bone Health and Osteoporosis Foundation, the disease causes an estimated 2 million broken bones every year. Certified Physician's Assistant Lori Beth Moyer with Lewis Scale Physicians joins us today to help us today to help us avoid becoming a statistic. Thank you for being with us today, Lori. Thank you very much for having me today. I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. So first of all, what is osteoporosis? Sure. So osteoporosis, quite simply, is a weakening of the bones. I think that's the hardest part about the diagnosis. There's no symptoms. You can't feel your bones getting weak. You don't get swelling or fevers or chills. There are no symptoms. Often people confuse osteoarthritis with osteoporosis. Arthritis is inflammation of the joints, and that's painful. But osteoporosis is really a weakening of the joints or a weakening of the bones. Every day, our whole lives, our bones go through this remodeling cycle where they break down and build back up. But what happens, like we just talked about, yes. or you just mentioned, one in two women and one in four men break a bone because of osteoporosis. So for those of your listeners who may be watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, to give you a visual, normal bone has pores and channels in it, but osteoporotic bone is more porous than it ought to be. So that's why you break a bone because they're just simply not strong enough to support you. That's very good visual for us to see. So how or why do some women get it? Sure. 
So we talk about modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. For example, modifiable risk factors would include your ability to quit smoking, uh, eat a good diet that's well-balanced, lots of healthy fruits and vegetables, regular weight-bearing exercises. Non-modifiable risk factors would include going through menopause early, like at age 45 or younger. If one of your parents has broken a hip, certain diseases like liver disease, type 1 diabetes, long-standing hyperthyroidism can all impact your bone health negatively. My goodness, so we need to understand that. And I've heard that inactivity is a cause. Is that true or is that a myth? It Well, inactivity can certainly add to osteoporosis, but it's not the only cause. But regular weight-bearing exercises, regular strength training is very important. Very good. So we are talking with physician's assistant Lori Beth Moyer. And my next question for you then is, how is osteoporosis diagnosed? Sure. Osteoporosis is diagnosed primarily by a routine DEXA scan. A DEXA scan is simply a specialized type of x-ray. It's completely painless, x-rays of your low back, your hips, and sometimes your wrist, and it measures how thick or how dense those bones are and spits out something we call a T-score and another something we call a Z-score. The other way we tell folks that they have osteoporosis is if they're over the age of 50 and they've had a ground level fall that resulted in a major fracture. So I oftentimes get the question of, well, it was just because I fell on the floor. It's just because the floor was too hard or, or I had on my house shoes or my flip flops. That's why I broke a bone. If you're over the age of 50, you have a ground level fall. We're talking standing height or less and you've broken your hip, your wrist, your back, your ankle or your, your shoulder. You likely have osteoporosis. It doesn't matter how awkward the fall or how hard the surface. If you're six feet up a ladder, you fall, of course you broke something, but tripping on something wet in your kitchen floor or missing a step going to take your trash out should not result in a broken bone. You need to see someone to get your bone health evaluated. That sounds like very good advice. And are there ways that we can um, keep it from getting worse? Sure, it's never too late to improve your bone health. Okay. Um, no matter the age and, and younger viewers, you know, there are things you can do now. Calcium and vitamin D, proper intake of that is very important. Um, again, regular weight-bearing exercises, walking, yoga, gardening, dancing, and strength training type exercises are very good for the bones. Um, there's a lot out there now of high-protein diets that, that folks go on because they're really trying to lose weight, but actually diets that are too high in protein negatively impact your bone health. Women only need about five ounces of protein a day in their diet. Um, also limiting um, alcohol for women for a bone health perspective, two alcoholic beverages or less a day, of course, don't smoke, and less than three uh, caffeinated beverages a day can help. I didn't know about the caffeine, yeah. so thank you for sharing that. <laughs> does that even include green tea for my own information? It, yes, that it has does. caffeine, yes, okay. and actually a lot of times right. tea can have um, more milligrams of caffeine per serving than coffee. You have to really okay. look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yes. Okay, so another question I have for you, for our mm -hmm. listeners, is can medications taken for other illnesses cause bone loss? Absolutely. That's a really good question. So... Prednisone is the number one medication out there that negatively impacts bone health. And we're not talking you had a rash and your doctor put you on a steroid dose pack for a week. That's typically safe. We're talking about long-term daily steroids for three months or longer. Uh, other medications, anti-seizure medications, um, certain medications for breast cancer, proton pump inhibitors, very commonly used. People have, people have reflux, so we're talking about things like Prilosec or Nexium, Pepsid, things even you get over the counter uh, can impact how we absorb things in our gut. So definitely speak with your doctor okay. about, about medication side effects. That mm. sounds like very important information. We are talking with physician's assistant, Lori Beth Moyer. And another question that I think we all want to know is, if we have it, how can we prevent fractures? Right, <laughs> right, absolutely. So <laughs> fracture prevention is sort of the number one goal of, of my service line at Lewis Gale, the Fracture Liaison Service Line. We want to prevent secondary fracture and hopefully even primary fractures. So there's certain things you can even do around your house to make it safer. Get rid of those scatter rugs. Everybody loves them. They're so cute. You might even have holiday scatter rugs down right now. Get rid of them. You trip and fall. Okay. Make sure loose wires, like from lights or your hair dryer, or curling iron or whatever, are picked up and out of the way. They're not on the floor where you could potentially trip over them. 
make sure things are well lit, especially keep a night light on in the bathroom. You can even install handrails um, in your bathroom or in your shower as well so you don't fall. Having a good rubber mat in your um, nonstick uh, bath mat helps too in the shower and in your bathroom so you don't fall. Have your vision and hearing checked. It sounds simple, but but if your prescription for your glasses might need to be changed, that can lead you to falls. Talking with your doctor about medication side effects. Lots of medications can cause you to feel lightheaded or dizzy. You want to try to try to avoid those if you can. Okay, thank you for that. And then my next question is, how frequently should I have a bone density test? And that the answer to that really depends. If you are over the age of 65 and you've never had a DEXA scan, you certainly need one. If you're younger than 65, over the age of 50, and you have certain risk factors, you need a DEXA. If you are being treated for osteoporosis, we typically monitor you every two years. If, if your bone density is normal when you first get a DEXA scan, your practitioner might put, put your next one out five years or more. So it just really depends on if you're being treated for osteoporosis or not. Okay, and you mentioned, so what does uh, a T-score mean? Sure, a T-score basically just compares your bone density to what normal healthy bone density would be. Osteoporosis is a disease. It is not a normal part of aging. So we compare your bones to what healthy bone should be. Thank you. We are talking with physician's assistant, Lori Beth Moyer. And my next question, this is so interesting. I really I like learning this. Um, how much calcium and vitamin D mm -hmm. do I need every day and how can I get enough of these right. nutrients? Oh, so vitamin D we only get from the UVB rays of the sunshine. Our skin absorbs it. As we age, we don't absorb it as well. And if we're good about protecting our skin with sunscreen, we're also blocking those UVB rays. There's not a lot of natural food sources for vitamin D. So you really need to take a vitamin D supplement. In general, the National Osteoporosis Foundation, now called the Bone Health and Osteoporosis Foundation, as of last week, states that you need about 1,000 international units of vitamin D3. Make sure it's D3 and not D2 a okay. day. You need 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day. Primarily get it from what you can eat. A lot of women will think if they just take a handful of calcium supplements in the morning, they're good to go. You only absorb a small amount of calcium at a time, so it's better to spread it out throughout the day and get it from your food. Okay. How much exercise do I need to boost bone strength, and which exercises do you recommend? Mm -hmm. You need five to seven days a week of regular weight-bearing exercises, like walking, yoga, um, you need two or three days a week of muscle strengthening. I really recommend a lot of folks... Um, even to go to physical therapy, they can work on balance exercises, show you proper lifting technique, um, show you proper techniques for uh, using weights, for example, so that way you don't inadvertently injure yourself. Thank you. And then one question that they, they I think is important, is hormone replacement therapy safe for preventing osteoporosis? Right, and that can be um, somewhat controversial. There's some evidence that it can help, especially in younger women. Um, hormone replacement therapy can have risk factors for certain women. I really encourage um, listeners to talk to their gynecologist or their primary care physician about hormone replacement therapy to see if they'd be a good candidate for it. Thank you. And what osteoporosis medications are available that prevent bone loss? There are two categories of medications. One um, category is called the anti-resorptive class. Those are medications you've probably seen or heard commercials for, like Boniva or Prolia. And then for women who have more severe osteoporosis who come to me for um, their osteoporosis because they've already sustained a fracture, we talk about medications in the anabolic class that actually build the bones back up in, in a quickly, um, or excuse me, in a quick time frame. That's, that's very helpful. And are there any, uh, for our listeners, natural methods mm -hmm. for treating osteoporosis? Natural methods. Be careful about if you Google natural osteoporosis because you will read a lot about calcium, such as from uh, oyster shell calcium or from bone. You need to be careful about taking that because if it's unrefined, it actually has high levels of lead in it. Um, natural sources are get your calcium, get your vitamin D, eat your fresh fruit and vegetables. Sounds great. And then finally, what are some other lifestyle changes I should make mm -hmm. now to keep my bones strong? Mm -hmm. If you smoke, stop. That's the number one thing. <laughs> Talk to your doctor about side effects, about medication. Go through your house and make sure that it is safe. Those scatter rugs are picked up. Again, your regular uh, calcium and vitamin D in your daily regime and get out exercising. Do what you can every day to try to keep your body strong. 
Oh my goodness, this has been so incredibly helpful for all of us women. Um, thank you so much for coming, Lori. Thank you very much for having me today. I appreciate it. We will have Lori Beth Moyer's contact information in our show notes at sisterhoodofthesecondact.com. There's more Sisterhood of the Second Act coming up. Sandra Brown Kelly was one of the first women reporters for both the Roanoke World News and the Roanoke Times. We'll hear from her next. Buy local this holiday season and get unique gifts on time. Start your holiday shopping at the New Moon Network store for original artwork by the Virginia artists featured on the Sisterhood of the Second Act set. You will also find Sisterhood merchandise there. Stop by the Earthworks Artworks Gallery at 228 South Pollard Street in Benton, Virginia or shop online at newmoonnetwork.com and have it delivered to you. Your purchase supports Virginia artists and local programming by the New Moon Network. I'm going to be an oak tree. I think I'll be a dogwood tree. My kids say they'd be looking for a thorny tree for me. With Evergreen, you can be a tree. Our biodegradable urn combines your ashes, natural soil additives, and a native tree of your choice. Be a tree and grow for tomorrow. I want to be a tree. Learn more at evergreenmemorialtrust.com. Step out the door with confidence, ready to conquer the day. Whether you are going to the cafe down the street or headed into work, you know you will always look your best in cabbie styles. Your stylist, Darlene Marshall, will help you pick the styles that make you sparkle. And Cabbie has styles for all body types. Call Darlene at 540-330-6819, 540-330-6819, and follow her on Instagram at Dapper Darlin. There's more inside the hemp mill than CBD products. There's a community. Stop in for Friday's Coffee Talk to enjoy free hemp coffee and treats. Patent pending products made from hemp for anxiety, pain relief, and organic healthy eating. Cavanoid products you can trust because the hemp is locally grown, processed, and formulated by us with patent pending formulations. That includes our pet calm and dog biscuits. The hemp mill, women owned and operated with nutritional offerings, local cards, gifts, jewelry, and Trending fashions made by women-owned businesses. TheHempMill.net Once again from the Fox Radio Roanoke studio, here's Kathy Heberly. Welcome back to Sisterhood of the Second Act. I'm Kathy Heberly. During her nearly 40-year career, Sandra Brown Kelly worked for both the Roanoke World News, which was an afternoon paper, and the Roanoke Times, which was a morning newspaper. While she was one of the first women reporters, she didn't start her career as a writer. She joins us now to talk about her career from then to now. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for asking me. It's so, such a pleasure. To, um, I can't wait to, to get through our interview and hear some of these exciting things that I've been reading about. And um, what was your first job at the paper? Well, I wanted to be on the newspaper in the newsroom, but they didn't have any openings. But they did have an opening in radio bookkeeping. No, in the bookkeeping <laughs> department. And the reason that I got the job was because when I was in college in Lynchburg, I worked in a furniture store behind the, at doing accounts payable, and I knew how to run the machine. So that's made you qualified. <laughs> and my, I almost can... Give, my, give credit to the accounting machine for my whole career. Isn't that something? And then, of course, for the people in the newsroom, the editors kept me posted when a vacancy came up. Very nice. What was the atmosphere like at the paper during the time with two papers operating out of the same building? Well, it was fun. It was, it was a friendly competition that at times got rather devious. Um, the the Born Up Times, of course, had the Sunday paper. And I started on the World News, and we just had Monday through Friday to Saturday. And sometimes we would try to find out what they were featuring on Sunday in their features department and go do the same story and beat them to it. I mean, it was, but it was, we, you know, we right. got along, and we were all great friends, but we knew that we were competing. There was no getting along and giving each other any edge on news. 
I can imagine. Now, this is something that I found extremely intriguing. It says you were working the teletype machine when President Kennedy was assassinated. Explain for our audience what a teletype machine was and what it was like working on that day. Well, a quick background, I was still an editorial assistant, which is where they would start newcomers such as myself because I didn't have my degree. I had dropped out and gotten married. And um, so I was the gopher between the teletype machine and the editor. Work, the teletype machine is used still in aviation and hard of hearing situations. Okay. But for the purposes of the newspaper, it, it's a, a system of c machines connected to different Associated Press members okay. and to the Central Associated Press office, so they shared news. We could both send stories and receive them. So when, when Kennedy was shot, there were constant updates, and, it, and they rang bells. I mean, it was noisy. It was zoom, zoom, okay. you know, bing, 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 bing kind of thing, and we would tear off the latest and take it to the editor. My goodness. And it was, it was heartbreaking, you know, finally sure. to see the president is dead. In, in a note. So they were kind of keeping you up in oh, real yeah. time? Every time, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh. We are talking with former Roanoke Times mm. reporter Sandra Brown Kelly. Now, you eventually headed the women's department at the paper. What did that entail, and why was it controversial at the time? Quick background again, both morning and afternoon papers had women's departments, and that's what they called them because that was where the, quote, soft news, they said, the editors and the men in, the, in charge, was, had to be placed. But in fact, we covered most of the heavy stories, sex education, I mean, the really social issues of the time. They didn't write about those in the news pages. We wrote about them in the women's mm -hmm. pages. And it was controversial because the whole idea of women not being quite equal. Yes. And even then it was controversial, which of course it still continues to be, I think. But Well, in, in addition to President Kennedy, what are some memorable stories from that time? Well, there was a lot about the environment going on at that time. Was there really? Yes. Actually, some of my colleagues um, took a long hike and wrote about, I'm talking about a really long hike through the Roanoke Valley and wrote about it. Sex education was a big issue. That's fascinating. Um, at some point, um, you know, at that time the newspaper was not very integrated in news at all. I see. At um, one point they finally established a Friday special section called the Youth um, Page in which we would run, they wanted me to run stories that involved African Americans and other cultures. So it was, uh, I feel like that the women's pages, such as they are called, were at the forefront of changing society for that matter. Excellent. And then after adventure they were merged into something called the Extra Section, which I did edit. Okay. Excellent. Um, it's, it's common to see female reporters now, but in the 1960s, I hear it was a real fight. So tell us about the protest female employees staged against then-publisher Bill Armistead. Well, that was a funny one, really. We had, we had never thought anything of wearing pants suits to work because we were wearing them all the time. But all of a sudden, that became a big issue <laughs> in, the, in the whole field of journalism. and and. Bill Armistead sent out a memo saying women could not wear them anymore. And so we had to go visit with him and explain that he really didn't have the legal right to tell us we couldn't wear pants. But it was, it was we had a petition which he didn't like, but finally he gave in. And, you know, he was a good soul in many ways, but he just thought that was a big issue that he had to get us out of pants. <laughs> that is funny. Um, so you mentioned this, but you also took part in creating the extra section. So what role do you see the paper having in today, uh, today's world, the newspaper? Well, I wish it had a stronger role. Yes. Unfortunately, the economy and, and society in general has made it very difficult for newspapers to, to succeed. Um, and frankly, I think the biggest um, 
area to suffer is the quote women's are softer news yes, issues. I agree. And the digital papers of course are doing a pretty good job of covering some of these things but I don't know where we're headed. No I don't either. We're talking with former Roanoke Times reporter Sandra Brown Kelly and when you left the paper you continued to write and edit area publications and teach. Why did you decide to teach your skills at the college level? I had always wanted to teach as well as being in journalism and so I was really fortunate that Times World and its parent company had a strong education support system. So they actually paid my tuition for me to finish at the community college and then at Hollins for my bachelor's and master's degrees. And I tailored my courses toward teaching English. Mm -hmm. But after I, re I didn't really retire. I just left that. I, I mean, I wasn't old enough to retire and I needed a job. <laughs> So I was just really fortunate that I was able to teach journalism at Radford. I, I taught some at Roanoke College later. I became kind of the the floating teacher. Okay. When they had they were looking for other permanent people, I would fill in for a year or two years. Wonderful. And it was a great experience. That's fantastic. So what is the most important lesson you hope your stu your students learn? Be versatile and be flexible. Excellent advice. Excellent advice. Why do you continue to write and teach when you could retire? I don't know what else I would do. And, and it, it's actually not a job. It's not it's a job. It's fun. No, it's, it's fun. fun. So, um, well, we have a, uh, just a couple minutes before mm -hmm. we have to wrap up. What are some of your favorite articles that you were involved in personally? Well, I covered health care for a number of years, and I was really excited to be able to write about some of the issues that were not so good for patients and some that were good. Uh, and I covered a lot of the growth of Carilion health care. And wow. then I uh, also wrote some about uh, migrant workers with the tobacco fields and I went to Central America and wrote some about what I saw in Central America in El Salvador and Nicaragua. So you did travel? Not, well, Not that I pay for, but pay I, for, I yes, did write right. stories from it. Yes. Um, I wrote, um, gee, we had some great pieces on breast cancer. Okay. Um, gay people. So you, some of the were cutting edge, what we would say, at, at for, for what now is commonplace. Right, you were, you right, were kind of at, at, right. the, at the edge of. Because Roanoke had Did a, that scare you to write those kinds of articles? I think we just felt excited to do okay. it and, and actually rewarded because those areas hadn't had attention. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's so good to hear. Well, thank you so much for being with us. That was It's been fascinating to hear your story, and well, I'm so excited that you don't plan on retiring. Well, thank you, and you're just so lovely to have me here. Well, thank you again. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. We will have Sandra's contact information in our show notes on our website, sisterhoodofthesecondact.com. We'll be back to wrap up the show after this. Kathy's Wardrobe provided by Cabbie stylist Darlene Marshall. See the styles in our show notes at sisterhoodofthesecondact.com. See where a grateful nation remembers its heroes and where Thomas Jefferson came to relax. Where small town charm is just down the road from big outdoor adventures. Find peace and quiet as well as the sounds of family fun. Destination Bedford is located where the Piedmont Plateau meets the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Where ordinary ends, Bedford begins. I want to thank Lori Beth Moyer and Sandra Brown Kelly for being with us today. Lori taught us about osteoporosis and what we can do to keep our bones strong and healthy to avoid it. Sandra Brown Kelly shared her story of breaking into a traditionally man's profession, and she continues to inspire and encourage another generation with her vast experience as a journalist and writer. I'm Kathy Heberly. 
Join us again next week for another edition of Sisterhood of the Second Act.